Hello, friends. Today, uh, this video is going to be a little bit different than many of mine. Um, I received an email from uh, a person who I've done some mentoring for, and she had some questions that she asked. And I thought, you know, I could type out a response to her or I could give a video response and then share the video response and maybe it would be of use to other people as well. So first, I'm going to read the email that she sent to me. And then I am going to kind of break it into sections and go through it and give responses. And uh, hopefully this will be of use to you. So we'll begin. Um, another professional area I am struggling with is how to be a hardworking and honest individual in a world of cheaters. For example, my at my new work, the new senior admin gets paid and praised much more than me, but frequently doesn't put in a full day of work and pushes her work onto others. I, on the other hand, shoulder all of my work, the extra work she gives me and cover for another person's work frequently as well. I rarely take breaks and stay late and uh, stay late when needed to get all of my work done. Sadly, no one seems to recognize the work I put in, and the more I do, the more my boss gives me uh, more tasks uh, per week since I always complete them all. It's a bit discouraging to see all of my slacking and well-paid coworkers getting promoted and praised when I see how they work. How does one become recognized as a hardworking professional when they're quiet and seemingly unnoticed? Do you have any ideas on standing out and succeeding beyond the cheaters while still being an honest person. So we're going to tackle it little by little. We're going to start out the first little uh, portion of this first, the first sentence or so for a sentence or two. Uh, another professional area I'm struggling with is how to be a hardworking and honest individual in a world of cheaters. For example, new senior admin gets paid and praised much more than me frequently doesn't, she doesn't put in a full day of work uh, and pushes her work onto other people. So if that's the situation that, that sucks. I hear you. And I'll bet you that just about everyone who is watching this video and everyone else in the world has experienced something similar. It is just very normal in bureaucracies that this is what happens. So that doesn't help you. Stuff that sucks, sucks. And even though, even though it's, it happens to other people as well, eh, it still sucks for you. Um, so I would say one of the things that you might think about is comparing yourself to others and your pay to others and your value. If you're comparing all of these things to other people you work with, I'm not sure that's going to bring you ultimate happiness. Um, a good video to watch for that, Jordan Peterson did just a short piece um, on negotiating and brought out some interesting points that's worth your time. I'll uh, link that video in the description. And then also, I would say the senior admin, if this person's job is to supervise and delegate and such, well, that's kind of their job is to pass on work to other people. And if they did all of the work themselves, then that's that's not leading or supervising or managing. And so I'm not saying that this person is supposed to delegate work to others, but if so, yeah, that's kind of what you do. And it's how things work. And in just about every organization, relationship, uh, employment, otherwise, it seems that crap rolls downhill. And then when things go well, praise rolls uphill. And it, it just, it kind of sucks. If things go badly, the person at the bottom is blamed. If things go well, the person at the top is praised. And it ain't, it ain't cool. It ain't fair. It ain't wonderful, but life ain't fair. And it's just kind of how things work. Um, the more you work, the more you're probably going to earn. The closer you can get to the top of an organization, probably the more money that will rub off on you. Um, the more that you do, yes. Uh, I know that in organizations that I work with, when I need something done, I'm not going to go to the lazy person who never completes it. I'm going to go to the person who has just been getting everything done. And as you know, my mentee, um, you know someone who works in uh one of the my businesses and that person is the hard charger go getter and he has so much more piled on him than anyone else because I know he's going to get it done and I don't even have to ask he just goes out and gets it done now in my case since we're a small business I'm able to see that and hopefully I fairly compensate that and give extras and bonuses and opportunities and hopefully I make that relationship 
a win-win. But in a larger organization, um, you know, Sam Walton wasn't able to, you know, look at the people, the checker at, at some remote store and tell that they were doing a good job. And that's kind of the problem with bureaucracy, which we'll get into in just a little bit. Um, I would suggest maybe you look at what did it take for that senior admin to get to the position that they're in, where they're making more money, they have a higher title, et cetera, more respect, maybe. What did it take for them to get there? Was it hard work or was it another set of characteristics or skills? And if it was another set, maybe that's what you ought to do. And I don't know what it was, but that would be worth looking at. Um, and, and also think about your current senior admin who you don't care for, that person, if they moved up to the position they're in, there's a good chance they'll move up again. Would you like to go with them? Take their old position? I don't know. This is dirty politicking finagling, but just a thought. Um, it could also be helpful to psychologically take another look at how you are looking at this, uh, at this job. Maybe instead of looking at your job as being assembling widgets or writing code or whatever the tasks are that is the primary thing in your job, that isn't really your job. What if you looked at it as though your real job was to make your supervisors look good and to help them look good in front of their supervisors? And that's what you had as your primary goal. Now, that's not the most productive way for the world to work. The most productive way, I think, for the world to work is anyone who's capable, start your own little business and make that happen. But that is, as you know, a ton of work and a, it's, it's just, it's a challenge. It is not easy. So... If one chooses to take the easier route and work for someone else in that system, maybe that's a smarter way to look at things is how can I help this company succeed? Not even the company, because the company isn't really a, a live entity. The people who matter to you might just be your supervisor and their supervisor. So how can you look good in their eyes? How can you make them look good? Maybe that should be your job. And so you say each day when you go to work, my job is making my supervisor and their supervisor look great while making the company money. That could be a good way to look at things. I'm going to return to the email now. I, on the other hand, shoulder all of my work and extra work she gives me and cover for another person's work frequently as well. I rarely take breaks and stay late when needed to get all my work done. Sadly, no one seems to recognize the work I put in and the more I do. My boss just gives me more tasks per week since I always complete them. Uh, it's a bit discouraging to see all of my slacking and well-paid coworkers getting promoted and praised when I see how they work. Um, again, comparing yourself to others, um, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Now, also, what is your real goal? And so you said... Uh, how does one become recognized as the hardworking professional when they are quiet and seemingly unnoticed? Do you have any ideas on standing out and succeeding beyond the cheaters while still being an honest person? So sounds like your goal is to stand out and succeed while being an honest person. Those are your ultimate goals. And I would ask you, are they really? You, you work in a huge bureaucratic organization. And maybe your particular company, but I, I know your company works for one of a, a Fortune 50 or Fortune 100 company, like as a subcontractor. And so you are essentially part of that organization. And it's a huge bureaucracy. And is standing out to a supervisor or a lead admin who you don't really respect, is having them think that you're cool? Is that really what you want in life? Is that the person who you want to impress? If it is, that's okay. But really think about that. Is that the person who you want to impress? And I would say, maybe not. Some dumb, political, lazy supervisor without a work ethic, I don't really care what they think, other than what they can do to help me immediately, get promoted, get more money, et cetera. I don't really care what they think. And bureaucracies, like government jobs of any size or private businesses that get huge, they have a, a, a different set of rules for, for succeeding than small private businesses. A whole different set of rules apply. And I don't like those rules. And because I don't like those rules, 
I don't work for big companies. And maybe someday my situation will change and I'll be old and broke and have to work at Walmart as a greeter. But at the moment, I'm able to go out and produce and start businesses and not have to deal with that. So if you are going to work for those big organizations, I would say, look at your values. And you know the, the values list that I have. And, and that isn't comprehensive. Like there are many others and maybe the ones I wrote are biased. This is just to get you started and make you think. Come up with your own unique top five values, the things that are most important to you and the five things that are least important or, or have least value to you. Write those down. Really think at them. Look at them. A week later, make some changes to them. Look at really, that's you. That's the person who you are. Really look at that. And then think about what you want in life. Uh, you want to be a hamster in, in a wheel and just spinning and spinning and, and making a little bit of money here and there, but not really having a huge chance for promotion I, I, of your life, of your, your state in life. I don't know. Maybe that is what you want. I, I think you have to look at who builds the world, who makes things happen, and who just lives in their world as employees. And if you're living in their world as an employee, eh, different set of rules, different set of uh, yeah, different different set of things you can do to succeed there. And I again say life ain't fair. I wish it was. I wish everything was good and pure and lovely and the people that worked hardest got rewarded and and that the cream always rose to the top regardless of the size or shape of the container. Love that quote. I wish that was always the case. But you you life ain't fair and you can't always have your cake and eat it too. If you want to make pretty darn good money and have job security and only have to work 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week, then working for the government or a big bureaucratic organization, but maybe that's the, that's the slice of cake that's important to you. I, on the other hand, don't want, I don't want that. The security, the job security, the, the ability to make 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 grand a year and know that you're only working 40 or 50 hours a week. I like, I don't want to work part-time for decent money. I would rather have that upside potential of working full-time like 80 or hundred hours a week and having the upside potential of making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And but yeah, there are certainly jobs for big organizations who, where you can make that big money. You can be a CEO or you can be an attorney or a physician or something like that for a, a big organization. And you can make a lot of money there, but there is kind of that top end 80% of people never get above a certain level and not a choice I choose to make. Maybe it is what you want, but uh, yeah, not what I want. Something else about big organizations is they're going to fail. They become bureaucratic and they fail. And that's why I am not worried about Amazon taking over the world. Now, if the government is helping them, yeah, that's a real problem. If they're giving them subsidies and, and helping them out and engineering society in such a way that that they have the advantage or or the the bad sides are being taken away, yeah, that's a problem. But in a free market environment, in, in our philosophical fantasy land of what the world should be, that's that's not the case. Big organizations will fail, and the owners hate this. The owner of a business that you work for, they are wish that everybody would work hard and and put in those extra hours and take on the tasks and and only delegate when necessary and just put in hard work every minute of the day and produce a wonderful product or service for the client that's what they would like but they're beyond that they can't watch 80,000 people or 800,000 people or 8 million employees or they can't watch that many people anymore and it has become bureaucratic and the people who are in the eight levels above you and three levels before the uh, below the owner, they are also trapped in the same bureaucracy. How do they get to the top? How do they become the CEO, CFO? Is it by working hard and, and taking on more tasks? I don't know. Maybe that isn't what's rewarded. So nobody likes it that this happens, but it does seem to happen. And it's kind of good news for the mom and pa. Uh, business. That allows them to start up and make a go of it. When the big giants start to fail and they get too bureaucratic and too administrative and too blah, 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 then things to start to fall through the cracks and new little startups have a chance to get going, which is is kind of cool in my opinion. Um, look at Skype and, and uh, uh, Zoom. 
like here's this little company zoom that didn't have much going on and then when the uh the panic of 2020 21 22 when the panic started and everybody was forced to by the government to work from home and such all of a sudden zoom seemed to just make things happen skype fell by the wayside and zoom won well that's what happens if if you'd ask a year before if you'd asked in 2019 if you're going to do video conferencing for work what what do you use well everybody said well you, you mean when you skype with somebody that's what we all thought now people are like skype oh yeah isn't that the old apple hotmail kind of thing and now we all think of zoom so that's what happens is room is made for for new organizations um so I, I kind of think of attaching yourself to a big company and i'm not going to go on too much more about this but it's kind of like attaching yourself uh, as a parasite to a, a big host, and you can suck a little bit of blood off of them all the time, but you're always going to be a parasite. And and I don't mean that in a bad way, like, uh, it, but it, it's just not, I, I don't want to attach myself to one thing that that's where everything comes from. I would rather go about and wandering and collecting my food here and there and elsewhere. And it's just kind of a different philosophy. Um, if, if you uh, who are watching this, if you attended 12 years of Prussian style schooling, uh, like the government yeah, public education system, maybe it's an okay thing for you to just be an employee. Like that's what it's designed for, but it's not designed to educate you. It's designed to make you an employee. And if that's your, your situation, great. I'm not great, but I'm sorry, but live within it. And if you don't want to go through the hard, hard work of changing it. Okay, just continue with that. I would suggest if you're going to live in that environment, though, there's a book that I'm almost finished with that's really good. I should have read it a long time ago. Uh, Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, and I'll link it below. Um, it is, God, there's so many of the things that's that, that are discussed in there that I'm disgusted by. Um, I think, no, this isn't how I want to live. And, and whether it's morally wrong or just aesthetically wrong, uh, there are a lot of those things I think, no, I don't like this. But I can see how other people have used that law of power against me to get power over me. And it's good to at least know what's going on on the playing field. Um, so that that book is one that I would certainly recommend. Another one is the old classic, I think from the 60s or 70s, uh, Games People Play. And uh, I'm not even sure who wrote that, but you'll find it on, uh, on uh, some book sale site. Uh, that is great to learn about all the little psychological games we play with each other. And if you watch that, or not watch that, if you read that, you'll probably notice in everyone around you the games that they play. And if you're introspective and you're not a sociopath, you'll probably recognize the games that you play. And you'll go, oh my gosh, I kind of do that. Like I caught on to some of the games I played and I'm trying to fix those now. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so what does your supervisor, we'll kind of close out with this. What does your supervisor uh, really want? Do they want more widgets produced? Do they want more clients helped? Is that really what they want? No. They want to make more money. They want to get promoted. They want the honor and respect. That's what they want. So keep that in mind. That's what they want. What don't they want? They don't want to get demoted. They don't want to get fired. Okay. That's kind of simple, right? Help them make more money. Help them look good. Help them get promoted. Help make sure that they don't get fired or demoted. That's your job. Look at it that way if you choose to. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we wish that honesty and hard work were uh, what would help you get ahead, but no. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, go out and do, I just have some notes here I'm looking at. Go out and do what the uh, uh, the company rewards. Look at what they reward, go do that. Um, that's how you'll get ahead. So if you are socially adept and psychologically sophisticated, you can look at Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power and you can come up with this strategy for how you're going to su succeed in your organization. You can look at all the different people and how you're going to use this one to, to follow them up and how you're going to put another one down so you can take their position and the things you'll say to build your reputation and, and to make things work for you in the long run. Maybe that's your, your thing. I am not good at that. Like at recess back in school, I wasn't the first person chosen for the team. I wasn't in the first half of people chosen for the team. Um, I am not popular. Uh, you know, I'm not a pop culture kind of guy. I'm not the frat boy. Um, I'm weird. I'm different. I'm strange. And I've come to embrace that. But for me, going into an organization like 
Amazon and thinking that I can start out as a, a supervisor, night supervisor, and and then in time I'll become a day supervisor, and then I'll I'll have five supervisors who I supervise, and then I can. It's not going to happen. Like I don't have that personality to make that happen. Maybe you do. I don't. So think about if that's really what you want, and if you do, go for it. So I'm going to close out with just a little return to reality here. Just a a few things. Life is rough. A few cliches here. Life is rough. It ain't fair. Nothing is handed to you. Um, I'd say spend 20 minutes, another little homework assignment for you. Just looking up a few short little videos on regression to the mean, this concept, and how generally that's what's going to happen. And this isn't specifically related, but let that bounce around in your head a little bit because it is related and it'll, it'll come to you in a few months after reading it, it'll just bounce into your head and you go, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Uh, nobody's perfect. Supervisor isn't, you definitely aren't. I'm definitely not. None of us are perfect. We're all just kind of trying to scrape out a a little good life here on this rock. And yeah, that's, that's kind of how things are. Keep that in mind. Um, the best player on the team, uh, is not promoted to be the manager or owner of the team. People who own, I don't know, that much about sports ball but uh i don't know the the ravens or buccaneers or dallas cowboys or the the kobe bryant football team or well i don't well, whoever the big national teams are the people who own them are not the people who played the game the best and the people who coach those teams are not the ones who are the best players we each kind of have a role in life we can change our roles but what is your current role what are you aiming at and uh, yeah, recognize that. Uh, and when you're in somebody else's house, play by their rules. You might not like it. Like I've been into houses where these disgusting, horrible human being put their toilet paper rolls on with the paper hanging on the backside rather than the front. Yeah, okay. Admittedly, that is a horrible crime against humanity, but it's their house and it's their rules. So I I might mention something to them and try to bring them out of that darkness in a friendly, fun way, but I'm not going to change the way the toilet paper roll is. And that's how it is in your organization. It's set up in a certain way. Yep, Got to play by those rules. In your house, you get to make the rules. In your boss's house, they get to make the rules. If you don't like a private company, if you don't like the public company you work for um, or the the big company you work for, start your own business. Well, I know you, um, who I been working with and been friends with and mentor menteeing with i know you did that you succeeded and it was a lot of work and you chose to go to the big giant and attach to them and get money off of them and have less stress and worries and more money and that's your choice and you can change it again at any point but just know yeah that's the option and it ain't fun it ain't easy we don't go to work if, if we work for somebody else, we usually don't go because we love it. Very few people are that fortunate. Um, and look at the benefits. If you only want to work 40 or 50 hours a week, there's going to be a price for that. And working for a larger company allows you to only work part-time like that. And so if that's something important to you, man, yeah, just know that that's, that's what's important. And, I, and that's how I'll, I'll finish this. What are your values? What's important to you? What do you want? Um, I hope these, these ideas, these ramblings were of help. Um, and please, if you have feedback, whether it's, whether you're the person, uh, specifically to whom I'm speaking or someone else who's watching this, please leave your ideas, the things you've learned. Uh, what have I missed? Add some of them below. And I, and I did, I mentioned several things, uh, books and such. Those links will be in the uh, description below. Please do like, uh, this video and subscribe. That's important. And if you'll push that little bell button, then you'll know when I put out other videos and hopefully they'll be of use to you too. Uh, as I try to grow my channel, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, being unclassy here and begging, but if you could kind of spread the word, maybe tell a friend about some of my videos, uh, if you think they're good, that'd be awesome. Love to, uh, love to grow this channel. Thanks again for spending your valuable time with me. I hope I've uh, provided some value to you.